I want to start a series that we're going to call Multiply. Look at your neighbor and say, Multiply. Can you stand all across the room? We're going to read a scripture. Can we stand for the reading of God's word? It'll be on the screen. If you want to open your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 1, we're starting right at the beginning. I hope you don't mind. You don't have any lunch plans because we're going from Genesis to Revelation. I figured we'd make this month a long one in church. No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Some, someone's leaving right now out the back door. I see him. They're like, I'm out of here. Genesis chapter 1, it says this. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Shout multiply. multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Father, I ask that you would multiply this word. God, may it be a seed sown into our heart that would transform us. It would raise our level of faith, and it would advance the kingdom of God. Everybody said amen. 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 You could be seated this morning. Many of us know this passage of Scripture where God creates Adam and Eve. God creates man and he takes dirt and dust and he breathes into that dust and human, humans are born, right? Humans are made. Adam and Eve, the first people that ever walked on the face of the earth. In the first command that we see in the Bible, the very first thing that it says, then God said, there was not a, not a sentence before that, that then God said, he said it to the birds, he said it to, to the atmosphere, let there be light, let there be earth, let there be water. But the first words he says to mankind, be fruitful and multiply. Now you see, many people think that just meant get busy and procreate. Listen, I have a minivan and it is full. I have an A+. Plus. Some of you have two kids, you're at like a B. Some of you, F. No, but how many, we hear that and we think, fill the earth. And, and God did mean that, right? We know that God wanted us to fill the earth. And he says the same thing to the birds. Be fruitful and multiply. He says the same thing to the animals. But there is more in that sentence than just go make children. The very first thing that God says to mankind, he did not say, fill in the blank. Whatever you want. He did not give them a command to do all these other things. You know what he said to them? Be fruitful and multiply. We know from this moment in Scripture that God's purpose and command for us is to be multipliers. This was not something that, ah, maybe you should try this. Maybe, maybe you should think about being fruitful and multiplying. No, he says, the command of God to the very first people that walked on planet Earth was to be fruitful and to multiply. Don't stay the same. Don't just stay where you're at. Be fruitful and multiply. And he says, have dominion. In other words, he set them in control and to have authority over the things of the Earth. Could you imagine being Adam and being like, ah, oh, that's a canary. Where did you get that? I don't know. I just thought of it. Oh, there's an elephant. And he names all these animals, right? And he's just naming things. And he has all of this power. We know that God did not call us to just be lazy, sit around and do nothing. He called us to expand what he's given us. He's called us to be multipliers. He's called us to be multipliers. From this, we know that God expects something from us. As a Christian, when you get saved, God did not just say, I saved you from hell so that you could just sit in a pew at New Life Church and make it warm for the next person. There is a call on your life to be a multiplier. Someone who multiplies is someone who says, give me a seed and I'll make it a tree. Give me a business and I'll turn it into a million dollars to sow into OCC. 
Give me, uh, give me a singing gift and I'll give it to God and God will turn it into an anointing that when I sing, somebody would be set free. A multiplying spirit is what the church needs. You see, we get so caught up in do we have the Holy Ghost and do we pray in tongues and what's happening in the altars and healing. But so many times churches just sit on their hands and they sit down on their pew and they warm the pew and they sit there week after week and say, why are there no new people coming in? Why is our children's ministry not growing? Why is our youth ministry not going? And God said, I gave you a seed. You've got to put it in the ground. You've got to till the soil. You've got to build a parking lot for 60 more spaces this is a command for us to go beyond the borders of what we think right now and to multiply Adam and Eve don't just stay in the garden but multiply you say but but this is just comfy and cozy and it's real easy I promise you this when God begins to stretch you your eyes will see things You will hear things. You will see things. God will do miracles so great when you begin to multiply, when you get the spirit of, I'm not staying where I'm at, but I'm going to expand. I'm going to take one and make it two. I'm going to take two and make it four. You will begin to see things. And I promise you this, new life is a multiplying church. But I want to come this morning and give a word to you that we are not done multiplying. It is not time to be a seat warmer in a pew. It is time to roll up our sleeves and get to work for the kingdom of God. You say, well, that's, that's cute, Pastor Andrew. That's just one scripture. Well, Pastor Dave taught us this just a couple months ago. There's a parable in the Bible, the parable of the talents, and there's a master in Matthew 25. I'm not going to read it for time's sake. 14 through 30, it says this. There was a master who was going to be going away, and he had three servants. And so he takes his talents, his, his money, and he gives uh, uh, to three different servants a different amount. To one servant, he gives five. To another, he gives two. And to another, he gives one talent. So the master goes on his trip, and the servants begin to do what they're supposed to do, and, and, and there's, they're, they're supposed to invest it, and they're supposed to multiply it, and when he gets back, he says, I want to see the return on my investment. Did you multiply? So the servant with five, he says, Master, I, I invested your money, I, I, I invested the talent, and now I have ten. The other servant with two returned back double, and he had four. But there was one servant who had one. And he says to the master, I know that you're a hard man, that you're hard to please, and that I didn't want to make you angry. And so I got scared. I was scared that I would lose what you gave me. And so I just dug a hole and I hid it in the ground. But, you know, I still have it. Here it is. Here it is. Here's one. I'm giving you back what you gave me. And the master doesn't say, well done. You see, in all three of these people, Jesus calls the two servants who multiplied what they had loyal, faithful, and trustworthy. And Jesus called the one who maintained, he did not lose. See, in the church, we think, well, you know, if we don't lose, we're doing well. No, God doesn't call us to maintain. The kingdom of God is moving forward. And if we're not moving forward, then how many know the kingdom of God is way ahead of us and we are way far back? And he says to him, you maintained. And he says that you are a unfaithful and lazy servant. And pastor did that. He showed us. We had Tony out here just getting the, getting the money. You guys remember that? And you guys were giving him money and they were multiplying. And we know from that parable... We know from that, it's another time where God tells us, and it's a command to us, and it's a picture of what he expects with what he gives us. God expects a return on his investment into our lives. God, give me a business. God, give me a business. How many know when God gives you that business, he expects a return on his gift? Every single thing that we have is from the Lord. It is a gift from God. God, God, if you would just bless me, 
If you would just financially bless me, then I'll start to give. No, 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 no. That's not how it works in the kingdom of, kingdom of God. How I many know when you start to give and you start to walk out your faith, God will then begin to bless you. God re- expects a return on the investment in our lives. You see, most people live in the mindset of addition and not multiplication. Well, well, I maintained or I just got a little bit more. But God is a God where two plus two equals 10. Some of you are like used to that. You're like common core math. Some of you parents are like, yeah, that makes sense. That's what my kid's math book says. You say, you're sitting in that seat in the mindset that you have is not multiplication. It's maintain or just addition. And the church has got to fix their mindset that when God gives me a seed, when God gives me a gift, when God gives me a life, when God brings people into this house, we are not just supposed to say, go through the growth crack, go to discover, serve, and fit, and we've got a pew with your name on it, and you will be there till you die. Many of us have that mindset, but we've got to get our mindset changed to be a mindset that when God gives me something, what can I turn this into? When God gives me something and God trusts me with something, you see, the two servants he called faithful, loyal, and trustworthy. What if what you had and the gift you had, your ability to multiply it would be When you get to heaven, if God would say, you're faithful, you're loyal, and you're trustworthy, many Christians would be in trouble. Some of you are sitting there thinking, ooh, I'm in trouble if I get to heaven and God expects a return on his investment. We have to change our mindset to be people who think bigger with the thing we have in our hand that God can do more with it. You see, if I had an apple sitting in front of you today, inside of an apple are seeds. You see, there's maybe five to eight seeds in that apple, and I could cut that apple open, and I could show you what's on the inside of that apple. I could say, here's a seed, and here's a seed, and here's a seed. But you see, there's something about apples. An apple can produce 3,500 to 6,400 apples in a year in a seed. And one apple has about five to eight seeds. See, I can cut the apple open and say, this is how many seeds are in the apple. But you know what I can't tell you? How many apples are in one seed? Some of you are saying, but I've only got five talents. I've only got one seed. But what you don't know, if you take that seed and say, God, would you bless it? I'm going to have a spirit of multiplication. I'm not going to be stagnant with it. I'm going to put it in the ground. You see, this is the problem. Many of us, we want to hold our seed for everyone to see. This could become 3,500. This could become 6,400 apples. But you see, it's got to get hidden in a season, and you got to put it under some dirt. Hello. I I want God to use my singing gift. And Lincoln says, we can have to sing back up for a little. I want to preach on the pulpit. We need somebody in the parking lot. You see, Apple seeds or any seed goes into the ground and it's hidden for a season. People who understand multiplication understand that in one moment you could look at me and see one seed. But if I get it in the ground and I get it under some dirt and the Holy Ghost gets on it, then guess what? The next time you turn around, I've got an orchard of apple trees. You see, all of us are seeds. Each and every one of us have a seed in our hand. The Bible says that each and and every one of us has been given a gift. You have a gift on the inside of you. And you can either say, I'm going to hold my seed and maintain. Maybe I'll make it one to two. Maybe I'll do addition. Maybe I'll just do a little. Or you could put that seed in the ground. And on the other side, that apple seed could produce an orchard. See, I'm setting the ground work for this series because we have to have an understanding. This is not just Pastor Andrew's idea. This is not just a churchy thing to get you to serve, to get you to give. Hello. We all know preachers that they'd be preaching up here like, you got a seed. If you say, 
sow a hundred dollars and God will give you an order. We're not doing that. That's not what I'm doing. But I am telling you that God calls us to be multipliers. I want to take you to a scripture in Luke 9 and I want to read it. Can we all look at the screen? I'm going to read this. Because I believe this is what the Lord spoke to me about this passage of scripture because I believe we're in a critical season. You see, past, I told the staff this, pastor may be away, but it's time to move forward. It's not time to put it in, put it in neutral and coast. It's a time to continue to move forward. And the Lord gave me some principles that I wanna talk this morning about multiplication. It says, when the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the 12 came to him and said, send the crowds away so they can go to the surrounding villages in countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here. He replied, you give them something to eat. Look at your neighbor and say, you give them something to eat. And they answered, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish unless we go and buy food for all this crowd. About 5,000 men were there. Now we know, and many of you know, that that was not counting women and children. So there could have been up to 20,000 people sitting in front of Jesus. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. The disciples did so, and everyone sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. You see, so many of us know this scripture, and it's been talked about so many times. You see, this story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, really the 20,000, is one of the only stories that you can find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that was a miracle that he did. The only other one was Jesus dying on the cross and the resurrection. This story of Jesus feeding and multiplying the bread the five uh, loaves and two fish. This is the only one that if you turn to any of the gospels, it is in there. I think it's important that we take a lesson from that. You see, Jesus is preaching and the people come and Jesus don't care about the time. You see, Jesus is just up there preaching. You see, it says it was late in the afternoon. Can you imagine it's about five o'clock and you came to church and you're like, I have not eaten a thing. This preacher is going. Jesus is just up there speaking. He's just rattling off scripture after scripture. He's preaching it. And the disciples are like, okay, which one of us is going to go tell Jesus? He needs to be quiet. <laughs> We're trying to get out of here. Oh, I have an idea. I imagine it was Peter that was like, hey, hey, James, are you going to tell him? I'm not telling him. Send Judas. Send Judas. Send Judas. <laughs> and he walks up to Jesus. He's like, hey, Jesus, you've been, you've been at it for a while. People are, people are starting to get hungry. They thought if we tell them people are hungry, Jesus will be like, okay, that makes sense. They've been out here for 12 hours. It's 5 o'clock. It's late in the evening. But Jesus doesn't do that. You see, our version of Jesus would have sent them home so they get a big fat steak said, I'll meet you tomorrow at 10 a.m. No, Jesus says, hold on a second. I can do a miracle here. And they say, Jesus, even if we had enough money to go buy enough food, we, we, it wouldn't be possible. We only have a couple denarii. We, we couldn't even go to the store and do it. You see, Peter had all the reasons lined up, all the disciples. If he says this, this is what we've got. He's surely going to send the people away. And the disciples tell Jesus Send the people who are hearing from the Lord away. You see, a scarcity mindset says send them away. People who live in a scarcity, well, we only have, 
You see, some of you, you say, I want to be a multiplier, but what comes out of your mouth is, well, I only have. You know where that comes from? A mindset of scarcity. A mindset that what I have is not enough for God to do. You see, if they would have said, Jesus, we have a, a little bit of fish and loaves. See, we haven't even got to that part at this point. They're just like, all we have is two denarii. You see, a scarcity mindset will say, send them away. I don't ever want to be a church where we say, go on home. We don't have a miracle waiting for you. You see, religion will say, go on home. Come, I don't want to be a church where someone walks in and they say, I need a touch from God. I need a miracle in my body. I need God to save my child. I don't want to be the church that says, you know, I don't think we have that in, in our storage cabinet. God will bring every single thing you need to you in the moment that you need it. And their faith was based on their natural circumstance, and they said, send them away. And I'm telling you this morning, I know that we have a pastor that is not going to say, send them away, but he's going to say, come on in. There is food for the masses. We've got bread and fish. You see, they just had a natural response. We really don't, they didn't have the multiplication miracle yet. All they had was a couple cents to go to the store. A scarcity mindset will say, send them away. So not only do they send them away, or say to send them away, but Jesus says something ridiculous to them. He says, huh, and I love it because if you go to one of the translations, it actually says, he tells them, you feed them. And it says this, he already knew what he was going to do. You see, God will sometimes say, you feed them. You give them something to eat, New Life Church. And God already knows what he's going to do, but he's waiting and he's testing you to see how you will respond. You feed them. I want to tell you this. You have what you need and don't even know it. You see, what they didn't realize is that there was a little boy over in the corner with a little Spider-Man lunchbox. They didn't know that there was a little boy over there and his mama packed him a lunch and they didn't know that God could take that and turn it into feeding 20,000. And Jesus said, you feed them knowing that their miracle was sitting in the crowd, but they had to go find it. You see, the fish and loaves didn't just fall down from heaven like manna. They had to go work it. They had to go, do you got some bread? Do you got some bread? Jesus said, can you imagine being like, oh, what are we going to do? Jesus said to feed him. Well, clearly he must have a plan. I don't know what's going to happen. Hey, you see that kid over there? Go, go jump him and take his lunchbox. <laughs> Judas, jump him. Get his lunchbox. You see, you have what you need and you don't even know it, New Life Church. I'm telling you, there are things on the inside of you, gifts and abilities, things down in your spirit that God put a seed on the inside of you. And God says, you feed them. You see, God will bring them in. God will draw them in just like the crowd followed Jesus. But Jesus didn't feed them. The disciples were the ones who were responsible to feed them. I'll send the people you study the word. I'll send the people you start a life group. I'll send the people, you expand your parking lot, you demo your stage to do something different. I'll send the people, you start serving. You have what you need on the inside of you and you don't even know it. The Bible says that Jesus knew what he was going to do. You see, I don't ever want to be the person when God tests me and says, you feed them, that I say, oh, forget it. What he knew was there was something on the inside of them. There was a miracle on the way. There was a boy with a lunchbox. There was a boy with a lunchbox. We see the story in the Old Testament of a man named Moses who has a rod. And you know the story. He's standing there and the Lord speaks to Moses and say, what is in your hand? What is in your hand, Moses? Moses. He says, it's just a shepherd's staff. It's just a rod. It's just a little gift. It's just a little bit of money. It's just a small gift. And the Lord says to him what? Throw it down. And when he throws it down, that thing becomes something else. You see, God is asking you this morning, what's in your hand? 
You have something. What Moses didn't know was that same rod was going to be the rod that when he stuck it into the Red Sea, that that water was going to split. You have every single thing you need to do what God's called you to do. It's inside of you. I'm telling you. And you may have to work for it. Just like the disciples, they had to walk around and find the miracle. It's on the inside of you. I'm telling you, it is on the inside of you. What is in your hand? Number three, they go to Jesus and say, all we have is a little bit of bread, a couple fish. You see, fear says we don't have enough. Fear says we don't have enough to be a multiplying church. Fear says, listen, if we start handing out bread and don't have enough for everybody, there's going to be a riot, Jesus. Fear says, let's just shut this thing down because all we have is small. But just like I said at the beginning, a seed could produce way more than what you think. And I've come this morning to just challenge you that what you have down on the inside of you is enough to accomplish your purpose. It's enough to accomplish your destiny. It's enough. Fear says, we don't have enough, Jesus. We don't have enough. You see, we get worried about what's missing. Instead of looking at it and say, oh my goodness, we are with Jesus. We are with the Son of God. And and not only that, but these disciples had seen Jesus do some crazy stuff. Like this isn't just like a random person. Jesus who's healing people. Sick people are getting healed. Dead people are coming out of coffins. All kinds of stuff. They brought that bread and that loaves to Jesus and they, they focused on what their lack was. You see, so many of us, we have something that if we give it to God, he could turn it into something miraculous, but we focus on what's missing. We focus on the lack. We focus on, well, I'm not good enough because so-and-so said I wasn't. You got to stop focusing on what's missing. Jesus knew that they didn't have enough, but he was testing their faith. Jesus knew that if they would have walked around and found all the bread and loaves, that there wouldn't have been any faith. They wouldn't have had any faith. But if they only find something small, they're going to have to rely on me. You see, I I never want to be the kind of person that thinks, man, I can rely on my own gift. I can rely on my own talent. I can rely on my own ability. Some of you have got gifts in this room that astound me. Some of you have the gift of business that you can take a business and you could grow it. But I'm telling you, don't ever get it uh, uh, mixed up. It is God who will give the increase. And I never want to be someone that says, man... I can do it all by myself. I can, I can just take this and I can make it what God wants it to be without him. No, see, God knew that they were going to have to bring their lack to Jesus. And in that moment when they give it to God and they start passing out the bread and it starts multiplying, they're going to realize this was not me who did this miracle. This was not me who did this thing. It was God who did this thing. New Life Church did not grow because, because we did A plus B equals C. No, people People don't just show up on a Sunday morning in the, in the thousands because we had good worship, because we had a nice stage, because we had nice parking. No, God is the reason that people are getting saved. God is the reason that people are getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. God is the reason why people are getting set free. May we never forget that we need the fish and the loaves to be in the hands of Jesus. So Jesus says, give it to me. Give me the bread. Give me the loaves. And he takes the bread. I got some bread this morning. Some of you were looking at this bread. I see you. You're over there like, is he going to pass that bread out? And he takes the bread. And he breaks the bread. He blesses it. He prays over it. Now, I got to wonder what that prayer was. You see, thanksgiving for what you have will unlock things that you don't have. Thanksgiving for what you have in your... God, I thank you that I only got one talent. But boy, I'm about to steward this talent till it becomes ten. 
Come on, some of you sitting around like, man, I can't give thanks. I only got one little piece of bread, and there's 20,000 people. No, Jesus said, Father, I thank you for this bread. I thank you for the one soul that got saved at the altar. I thank you for that one person who started a life group. I thank you that we sent more than one box around the world for OCC. You see, you got to thank him with the little, and God will trust you with the more. Jesus takes the bread. He blesses the bread. He breaks the bread. You see, when you give it to God, he will give it back to you, but with the ability to multiply. The same bread that they handed Jesus, if they'd have took that bread and said, I'm going to skip the blessing part, I'm going to skip thankfulness, oh, my goodness. Some of you are just like, I got a gift. I'm not even going to thank God. I'm just going to work my gift. No, you've got to thank God and have an understanding. He gave you the gift. It was the same bread that they handed to Jesus. He gave thanks for it, gave it back to them. Nothing changed in the bread. The bread didn't miraculously turn to 20,000 loaves of bread. But you know what it did? When you give your gift to God, say, God, I give you my gift. I give you my talent. I give you my church. I give you this ministry. We give you New Life Church. God blesses it. He breaks it and hands it back to you. And guess what? Inside of that bread was the ability to multiply. And what I love about it is if I'm, if I'm one of the disciples and I hand Jesus a loaf, he rips it and gives me half. I'm like, this is less than what I started with. You see, so many times when God's about to do a miracle of multiplication in your life, when God is about to expand you, when God's about to bless you, he'll hand you half back what you gave him. And you're like, Gideon, you're like, Jesus, I have thousands of men, and now I only have 300. And God said, if you'd have had the thousands, it wouldn't have worked. But if you take that 300, submit it to me, and understand that I make up the other half, I make up what's missing, then that bread can become a miracle of multiplication. Some of you are looking at me this morning like, you're all up in my business, Pastor Andrew. I just want to warm up you. In the words of Pastor Dave, this is not your church. He has said that, right? Am I lying, staff? He said, you are not going to be a seat warmer in this house. You're not, and, and, and I tell you this, if you are, you're going to be real uncomfortable because we're going to prod you and we're going to ask the Holy Ghost to light a fire under you to realize what you have. God needs it for the kingdom to multiply it, to steward it, and to be faithful with it. Sometimes God will hand you back less than what you gave him. So Jesus breaks it and hands it to the disciples. And then he says this. He doesn't just say pass it out. He says, tell the people to get in groups of 50. Have them get in groups. Circle up. Now, I'm just saying, if it's me, I'm like, I'm trying to be in group number one. You've got five loaves and two fish. I, come on, some of you at the wedding, you're like, what is the lead table? Who's going first? If I sit next to the bride, guilty. You're trying to figure out what table's going first. I'm trying to be group number one because that ain't even going to be enough for group number one. And he says, get in groups of 50, get in groups of hundreds and have them sit down. You see... Order always precedes multiplication. Some of us, we want God to bless our chaos. And I'm telling you, God will not bless your chaos. You're like, God, I want you to bless my business. And God's like, you got to get your finances in order. He's like, I've got miracles waiting behind that door. But you, as long as you stay in chaos and you won't let me reorganize your life, you won't submit to nobody, you won't take orders from nobody, you won't get things in order, you can stay broke. Some of us are like, God, I want you to bless my finances. I'm tithing. And you spend a 90% on McDonald's and Applebee's. You see, God will not bless your chaos. Order preceded multiplication. You see, God is getting our house in order. Right now at New Life Church, uh, uh, when Pastor hired me and Pastor Kathy, he said, I'm not just going to hire people for based on the size of where we are, but I'm going to hire for where I believe God is taking us. You see, Jesus walks into a house in the New Testament, and there's a girl who is dead. 
he walks into the house. And his disciples are in the house. And he says, you, you, and you, get out. We're like, I'm a disciple. <laughs> Jesus was getting the house conducive and ready for a miracle. You see, God is trying to get our house in order because chaos will not be blessed by God. You say, well, I don't like all the things happening in the church. There's more systems and struct. It's not what it used to be. Let me tell you something. God will not waste his wine on a church that doesn't have a vessel ready to catch it. Well, I don't, wanna, I don't want the stage to change, and I don't want the screens to be bright, and I, I, you know, I don't really like the color. I don't really, all church problems, all the church people that have been in church for a long time understand exactly what I'm saying. I don't want, but you see, God is getting ready to get things in order to bring a harvest that we don't even know. You see, you see the, the LED screen might not be what catches you, but it, may, it might be what brings in a drug addict who said, wow, they've got something that I found in a club. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go to that church. And they find themselves weeping at an altar because an LED screen was the, was the, uh, the fish, the, the bait that brought them in. But what God did was he turned that thing and he multiplied it into a miracle of salvation. God is getting our house in order. You see, God didn't just say, yeah, just willy-nilly, just go pass it out. He put things in order. If God is going to bless you, he's going to put a demand on your life to have order. You see, God will wait till things are prepared because he won't waste his miracle. Number six. So Jesus, this is the best part, right? This is the part we all love. They have the bread. They have the bread. Let me get my bread. They have the bread. And they're holding their bread. And they're like, all right, Lord, you blessed it. You put them in groups of 50 and 100. Jake, come here, come here. Come here, hold this. Could you imagine walking up to the first group with five loaves and two fish? It's like that person when you're standing in line and you see the food is almost gone and you're like, they better not take a big scoop. Because if I'm going to be standing there and there ain't going to be no refills. Some of y'all are hungry and licking your lips looking at this bread. Talking about food. And they're walking. They're like... Jesus said to go give it to him. So he must have something up his sleeve. Okay. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here's some bread. Here's some bread. Here's some bread. Oh, man, this is, this is running out, Jesus. We're one loaf down. We're one loaf down. Here's some bread. You want bread? You might need to get a small piece. You might need to get a small piece. You want some bread? Here you go. You want some bread? Chuck, get some bread. Josh, get some bread. All right. You get some bread. You get some bread. Here. You look like you need some bread. You need some bread. <laughs> you see, we spiritualize it like they just walked up with 20,000 loaves and started throwing it to people. God did not multiply the bread when he prayed for it. But he gave the bread the ability to multiply by blessing it, putting it back into their hands. But they had to do something with it. You see, only what is given away can be multiplied. Only what, oh man, come on, you're about to get some bread. You're about to get some bread. Joe, you look like you need some bread. Come on, there's some people who need some bread. You guys think this is funny. But every time they walked back to that basket, every time they said, man, I don't know if it was a faith walk back. It was a moment where they had to walk back and said, man, there's bread. You get some bread. Here, you get some bread. You get some bread. You get some bread. You're like, man, this is ridiculous, Pastor Andrew. There was enough bread for everybody. You see, the bread would not multiply until it was given away. New Life Church, we will not multiply until we give it away. Who wants some bread? Some, I just want to talk about this one. He's waving back here. I got to give him some bread. Sorry, cameras. I'm killing you right now. You get some bread. 
You get some bread. Come on, I hope your faith is rising. I know this is silly, but some of you are like the people in the crowd. Some of you think, I'm in group number 50. God has no bread for me. There's no miracle coming. I've been praying. I've been asking. I've been waiting for God to save my loved one. But let me tell you, your bread is on the way. Your bread is coming down your aisle. Come on. A healing for your body. Your bread is coming. You may think, this is so silly, Pastor Andrew, but every time Peter walked back to that basket, he had to have been thinking, that basket's going to be empty, and somebody's going to get left out, and I'm about to run out of here. There's a lot of bread in this basket, and I still got five more. I went to El Salvador four or five years ago, and I watched God do this exact thing. We were in a bus. Just stay right there. We were in a bus, and we had bags of water, like 25 bags of water. You think, some of you were like, man, I, like, bags of water meant something to them. We need to be grateful. So we go out of the bus, and they're like, we're going to give this water away. And I'm like looking at the master's student. I'm like, hey, hey there's, more, there's more kids than water. She was like, well, we're just going to give it away and see if God feeds the 5,000. And I remember in that moment thinking like, these people are going to be angry. There's, 20, there's one bag with 25 bags of water in it. And I remember standing there handing out bags of water to these kids. And as God is my witness, I, I, right hand up to God, I promise you, that bag never ran out. You see, some of you are waiting in line saying, man, you're talking about everybody else is going to get their bread, but I'm not going to get your bread. I'm telling you that bread is coming to you for your faithfulness. Bread is coming to you for your steadfastness. You were here when the church was a little bit smaller at New Life Church. And I'm telling you, Angela, the times that you served, the times that you sowed, bread is coming. You see, there's multiple people in this story that get affected different ways. One was the disciples giving out the bread. But imagine the people when they're like, oh my goodness, this bread is coming. You're good, Jake. You can sit. Only what is given away can multiply. You see, God will not give away what he called you to give away. God did not hand out the miracle. He made the disciples hand out the miracle. God cannot multiply what you haven't sown. Some of you are waiting for God to multiply your business, your ministry, your finances, and you've got a seed full, a pocket full of seeds sitting in your pocket. And I'm telling you, if you will trust God and understand that when I sow that seed and I feel like there's not going to be enough in the bank account and I make my way back to the basket, oh my goodness, God put a check in the mail. When I sowed my time into that person, and I don't think there's ever going to be a, 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 a return on my investment. And you walk back to that basket, and you think it's going to be gone. There's going to be nothing left here. And you say, oh, my goodness, there's another basket of bread. God will not multiply what New Life Church does not sow. You see, I love OCC because it's bigger than just us. It is bigger. We can say, God, we want to reach the people in Africa. Bless God. Hallelujah. God says, sow some boxes. I got to keep moving. You see, the miracle happened in their hand. It happened right here in the giving away of their bread. Moses, what's in your hand? John, what's in your hand? Linda, what's in your hand? Michaela, what's in your hand? See, God's asking you, what's in your hand? If you sow it, I'll multiply it. And as a church, I pray that God would give this church a mindset of multiplication. 
to know that if we sow what's in our hand, God will produce bread. And the story ends like this. They feed the 5,000, more than 5,000, the 20,000. And Jesus says, disciples, now it's time for you. See, some of us, we don't sow because we think, I'm not, I'm not, being, like, I'm not, I'm not being punked. I'm not giving to you and not having enough for me. Some of us are like, if I give all my time to the church, I won't have time to myself. If I give all my finances, God will, I'm trying to buy a house. I'm trying to buy a car. I'm trying to bless my business. I'm trying to do this. And what you don't realize is that if you sow the seed in your pocket, you'll go back with 12 baskets full of bread. You see, because the blessing will never leave you out. When you are a servant of God and you sow seed after seed after seed, I promise you when New Life Church sows these boxes, I believe as we send thousands of boxes around the world that the blessing of God will be like a boomerang. It'll shoot there and it'll come on right back to us because God blesses those who sow, who sow seeds. I came to tell you this morning the blessing will never leave you out if you sow your seed. As we close this morning, I want to end this way. As we think about Operation Christmas Child, I want to think about the mama. Imagine the mom that packed the box. Imagine the mother that that morning she just thought, little old Johnny, he's going to go out and hang out with his friends or do whatever he's going to do. And she put in there, oh, I forgot to open this up. Sure. I got my two fish. I got my two fish. <laughs> my son argued with me about borrowing his lunchbox and his fish. He said, Dad, you got to bring that back, right? I said, yes. Multiplied. Four fish in Jesus' name. Could you imagine the mother when the boy comes home and he runs in the house. And I have to imagine that the boy, if it's just me, I think the boy got a basket. That's all I'm saying. If the disciples who had no faith, who were trying to send people home, if they get a basket, the boy got a basket. That's the Andrew translation, not the Bible. But I believe the boy got a basket to take home. And I believe the disciples probably carried it there to show his mother. So he gets home, he runs into the house, he says, Mama, Mama, can you believe that, that I had just two fish and five loaves of bread? And these disciples came up to me and said, the Lord needs your bread. The Lord needs it. So he says, okay, I gave it to them. I said, okay, I'm just going to give it to you. Could you imagine the Mama when she realized that what she packed in the box was not what was really packed in the box? What she packed in the box was a little lunch. But when it got into the hands of God, when it got into people who gave it away, it became the ability to feed thousands. Can you imagine the boy saying, Mom, your faithfulness to pack me a box the lunch fed thousands in Bethsaida today. And now we can live off all this extra bread. You see, I want to talk to the mamas in the room this morning. I want to close by encouraging the mamas in the room who've been packing some lunch boxes, who've been packing some OCC boxes. If Linda, if you could stand for me for a moment. Linda, can you stand? We've got a mama in the midst who's been packing some boxes. We've got a mother who's been packing some boxes. And I want to be like the little boy this morning and say, Linda, when you cross through heaven's gates. You see, Linda and me had a conversation we were planning this month. And she said, I love this ministry. It's my life. But I don't know how much longer. Right? She's been dealing with health issues. And I just want to see year after year after year of boxes going around the world. I came to tell you, Linda, you are like the mother. 
You didn't know that you were feeding thousands around the world. You did not know that there's going to be children in heaven that come up and say, my name is, my name is, my name is. You packed a box in Poland, Ohio, and it reached me in Africa. It reached me in Zambia. It reached me all around the world. Come on, can we take a moment and honor Come on, can we stand to our feet and honor a mama who's been packing a box? You see, we always wait to be thankful, but we're thankful for you. We're thankful that you're a mama packing a box. So this is what I want to do this morning. I want to call all the mamas. Not, not literally, right? I want to call all the mamas who are sitting in the crowd today that say, I want to pack a box. I want to sow a seed in knowing that what I give into OCC today. You see, if there's one, this is the takeaway. You could throw it up. This is the takeaway. If you remember anything today, what is in your lunchbox is not what is actually in your lunchbox. What did we watch? We watched a video this morning called More Than a Box. So stand to your feet all across the room. I know it's a little late, I apologize. But at the count of three, I want you to come this morning. God may be tugging on your heart. He may be tugging on your heart, but I wanna tell you there's a child in Africa. There's a child that you gave them some colored pencils. But God wants to bring the gospel. So at the count of three, I want you to come and I want you to fill this altar. Take one of these hearts and I want you to do this. If you're not gonna sew the money on the card, please do not come. If you make the walk up to this moment, some of you, this is a faith walk. This is your bread walk. Cause you're like, I don't have $300, Pastor Andrew. But I'm telling you, if you will be faithful to do what God put in your heart, God will multiply your seed. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Come on. Let's be the mama. Let's be the mama this morning. And let's pack a box. Let's sow seed this morning. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the message today. And before you leave, make sure you go to our YouTube page and subscribe and check out our website. New Life exists to love God and lead people to live a better story. So whether you're gonna continue to listen to us online or come see us in person, we hope to see you again real soon.